Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here on your part is this hole that we originally made at a 0.25 hole, we're going to modify that hole so it's a little bit smaller. Uh, so we're going to go over here to the holes where they are. There's my two different holes. It's hole one that I want to modify on mine, so I'm going to double click on hole one. I'm going to pull that up. I'm going to change that down to a 0.13 hole. Uh, the reason for that is that's the minimum size hole that we can do with the operation I'm going to use for that hole here in a moment. Uh, so I want to kind of show you what the minimums are for that. So that's a 0.13 hole. We're going to go OK there and accept that. All right. So now we're ready to actually create the tool paths uh, for our router table. To do that, we're going to go to our CAM tab on the top. Uh, you know, normally we're here on the 3D modeling tab. I'm going to go here to my CAM tab. <clears throat> on my cab, CAM tab, the first thing I need to do is I need to set this up. So, not over here all the way in the corner like typical uh, with um, Inventor things. It's over here a little ways to Setup. So, I'm going to click on Setup. And when I click on Setup, I get this kind of outline of the part with this yellow block that's here. First thing I'm going to do is this XYZ coordinate. I want it to start on the top surface of this bottom. Uh, bottom left corner of the object. So I'm going to click there for that. Now the next thing I want to do is I want the X to be pointing in this direction that it is. I want the Y pointing up. And I want the Z <coughs> excuse me, pointing out the surface of the object. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the shaft of the Z here, on that blue portion of it right there. Click there. And then click on this line that goes in the direction I want it to go. So I'm going to click there. That did it all in one step perfectly and got that exactly where I want. Sometimes this thing will be pointing in the wrong direction. My Z will be pointing down or my X will be pointing in the wrong direction. So there's a lot of different things you can do. One thing you can do, if your Z is pointing in the wrong direction, you can just come over here to this that says flip Z axis. So check mark on that and notice how it flips it down to where your Z is pointing down. And then other things. If you if you're, want to change something else, you can change this and you can change your Z axis. It switches it all the way over here to this corner. Um, I didn't really want to do that, so there's all different kinds of things you can change. So I'm going to come back here. <clears throat> I'm going to go back to that one that flips back over to here. And I'm going to unflip that one, and it puts it in that right direction. Again, you can flip your x-axis, which flips it around there. But again, I don't want to do that, so, so there it is. So again, my z pointing up out of the surface of the top of the object. y pointing up and down. x pointing across. Okay, now that you have that, um, everything on this is set up the way we need it to be, so I'm just going to go OK and accept that. Now I have to look at um, everything that I'm going to be doing on this, and I just noticed I have a bunch of things already set up on this. Okay, all of my things are back to the original where it should be. So now what I'm going to do is, again, underneath my cam setting, I'm going to look at some of these different things that I can cam here. I'm going to push this down arrow here and see all of my different options of CAM. 2D Adaptive, 2D Pocket, 2D Contour, Slot, Trace, Thread, Circular, Bore, Engrave, and 2D Chamfer, and then there's one called 2D Milling, uh, which was the original tab. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the holes first. You kind of want to do the holes first, then you want to do the outline of the object. So to do the holes, for this small hole, I'm going to use um, Bore. So there's my Bore command. I'm going to pick it. <clears throat> Then, when I do my bore, I'm going to rotate this around a little bit. I'm going to pick the bottom surface of this hole here for bore. Puts that in there just like that. And I want to go OK. Oh, then once I go OK, I need to pick um, the tool that I'm going to use. So up here at the top, I'm going to type in 1, 8, and there. I'm going to select this over here that says by type. Now, it lists all the 8th inch tools out there. Um, I'm going to use an eighth inch flat end mill. So I get here to my list, eighth inch flat end mill. So there's my first one. There's my last. Oops, I'm at the ball. There's my last one. Now, here I can't tell which one I want to pick until I scroll over in this list all the way over here to this side. And now I see some of the different ones. I'm going to be cutting plastic. So I'm going to go down there to eighth inch flat end mill plastic right there. And that has a lot of my settings made the way that I want them set. Um, I am going to modify some things a little bit, though, however. So I'm going to go select that. Um, what that does is it actually um, sets up that tool. Now, I did get out of that by accident, so I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to double-click on the bore 2, and I'm going to go back into that, <clears throat> and we're going to look at some of these things in here. So again, that was just double-clicking um, on where it says bore 2. 
And that brings me back up into here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the spindle speed to 15,000 RPM. I'm going to speed that up a little bit from the 10,000 RPM. And then the cutting feed rate, I'm going to speed that up a little bit too to 80. So I'm cutting 80 inches a minute, or not 80 inches a minute, yeah, yeah, 80 inches a minute, sorry, and 15,000 RPM. The rest of these things, um, I'm going to leave them at their default. Um, you know, honestly, the plunge, I'm going to cut, cut that down a little bit, maybe. Maybe I'm going to go down to 20 on the the plunge, and I'm going to go OK. That just makes it go slower into the object when it's cutting that hole. So I got all those things set there. <clears throat> That's all I need for that bore, so I'm going to go OK. And you can see the path that that takes. It does a little teeny tiny spiral there on that. It's going to spiral in as it goes down and cut that little hole that's a 0.13 diameter. Now, my hole, um, or my cutter that I ch chose was a 0.125 hole. I can't make it exactly that because it has to do this little spiral. So the 0.13 made it just a little bit bigger than the cutter, which that's the smallest hole you can cut with that 8 inch cutter. All right, now... We're going to go and we're going to do this larger hole. For this larger hole, I'm not going to do a bore. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to come here to my 2D milling again. And I'm just going to pick one of these normal ones here, which is just the 2D pocket. <coughs> I'm going to go 2D pocket. Uh, once again, when I first pick it, it comes up with all those same tool settings that I had just on my last tool. And I am going to be using the same tool, so I can go ahead and just leave these the same. But... However, there are a few other things I'm going to change. First, I'm going to pick this contour for my hole. And now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do some other changes to this. Um, let's see. First off on that, I think I'm going to leave all that the same. <clears throat> I really don't need any other things on there. You know, honestly, on this one, I'm just going to leave this all set up just as it is um, already in there. And that's just going to do that pass. We're going to go OK. And that one is good to go. This one, notice how it does a little bit differently. It's going to spiral in down slowly on this red path that you see all the way down to the bottom of the sur bottom surface of the object. Then it's going to do a spiral cut around, removing all of the material totally from the inside of this. A um, little bit different than this one. This one is just going to spiral down. If you have a larger hole, it would just spiral around the outside of it and would leave a big chunk of material on the inside of it. A little bit better to do this on this size of a hole. I have a little chart that I'll show you later. I'll be watch that kind of helps you determine whether you're going to use a, a pocket or whether you're going to use a bore or what command you're going to use, or maybe even a contour. Uh, but you'll look at that video a little bit later. All right. Now next, we have these inside two holes being cut. Now what we need to do is cut around the outside of the object. To do that, it's just going to be a 2D contour. So we're going to pick 2D contour. <clears throat> Again, notice it has all these same um, default settings that we changed before. We're going to keep it at that. Um, next, we're going to go here to the bottom edge of the object. We're going to click on that bottom edge. It selects it. That's good. Now, on this one, I do have some other changes I need to make. Um, first thing is, if we just cut all the way around this up outside of this object. Uh, this object's going to just fall out of the 3D or out of the not 3D printer, out of the router table. And if it falls out of there, it's going to bang around. It wobbles around it may break off the router bit, which is a bad thing. We don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some tabs to this. So we're going to go here to our tabs um, tab, and we're going to click on it. Now notice when I click on the tabs there, it automatically throws some tabs in, spaced out at a distance of one inch. Well, that's okay, but I really don't like it because it puts a tab here at the bottom of this hole. Um, that tab is going to be hard to remove out of there. Uh, we have a disc sander that's very easy to remove tabs off of the flat surfaces, but out of this bottom, it's going to be a little bit harder to do, and it's just not good. So if we change this distance, let's say I make that 2 inches, um, now the only tab it has is on this one 2-inch long side. All these other sides are shorter than 2 inches, so it doesn't show you there. So we could play around with this a little bit. 1.5, it still puts a tab on the bottom of that hole. Uh, 1.75, it only puts one tab there. It just really doesn't give us what I want or what we want. On a larger part, this may work really good. On things that you don't have interior contours, it may work really good. There's another way of doing this. Instead of by distance, you can do it at points. So if we do that, now I can just pick the point I want my tab to be on. Well, I want a tab in the middle of this side here. I want a tab in the middle of this side there. Oh, I want a tab on the middle of this side. 
And then on this side, I don't want it in the bottom of this hole, so I'm just going to put one tab here and one tab here. That had more than one tab per side, but that's really okay uh, because I didn't get a tab in the bottom of this hole. It's going to be a lot easier to clean up. Next, the size of our tabs. Right now, our tab is an eighth of an inch wide. I'm going to change it up to a quarter of an inch wide and to an eighth of it, or sorry, and a sixteenth of an inch deep, or 0 0.06 deep. Right now, I'm at 0 0.032125, which is about a 42nd of an inch. I'm going to go with 0 0.06 depth, and I'm going to go not okay yet, but that's going to put my tabs in there where I want those to go. Okay? Now, from there, uh, we're going to look at a couple other things here. Uh, we got our tabs in there nicely. Uh, we got this. The only other thing that we will look at um, later, and we actually can look at it now, but is this multiple depths here. Depending on the thickness of your object you set it to, you may have to change your depth, depending on what type of object you're cutting. Right now, you have this set to an eighth of an inch thick uh, piece of material. You will, at random, be assigned a different piece of material. Um, some of you might have some material that's 0.12 thick. Some of you might have some 0.1875. Um, some of you might have some 0.25 thick material, varying thicknesses. Um, depending on how thick your material is, is whether or not you're going to have multiple depths. If it's an eighth of an inch or less, you're going to do it in one cut. If it's an eighth of an inch or more, you're going to do multiple depths. And then you're going to change this depth of cut here to an eighth of an inch thick. And that's going to do some different things. I'm not going to do that now to this one, because we're just going to do this one on this, and you'll change that here in a bit, um, if you have a thicker piece. So everything else, we're looking pretty good here. And we're going to go ahead and just go OK. And we're going to see what this looks like. All right. So now <clears throat> I see this outside contour. I see where the tabs are there. That's nice. Um, here I can see my pocket when I highlight that. Here I can see my bore when I highlight that. And if I go to set up above, um, it doesn't highlight, any, highlight anything. But if I go to simulate, it's going to show me all those steps. So I'm going to click on simulate here. And now I can see all of my steps out there. I'm going to go ahead and play the simulation just to see it does, make sure it does this right. First, it does that hole there. Now it comes over, spirals down, does that hole. I can jump forward here a little bit. Goes there. Comes back over and out. Does the outside contour. Notice it's coming up to do those tabs. And that right there, that's beautiful. That cut that just like what I expected. And that's what I'm looking for. <clears throat> if your part looks like that, you're done with this step. You can go ahead and go close here, and you can save this um, there where we got on that. I will do one more um, short video. That's going to be how you're now going to make this into the um, the post process, um, how you're going to do the post, and that's going to be a separate little video.